Hello and welcome. My name is Lena Shakure and I'm a speech and language therapist and PhD student at UCL. My work is supervised by Dr. Suzanne Beek from the Division of Psychology and Language Sciences and Professor Jill Livingston from the Division of Psychiatry. For this review, I also worked with Claire Yu, who is a master's student within the Division of Psychiatry. I'm really pleased to have this opportunity to share our findings with you. Our systematic review focused on intergenerational programs. These are regular interactive sessions in which the older and younger generations get together to share activities, build relationships and learn from each other. We looked at two tightly defined populations, people living with dementia or dementia symptoms in long-term care settings and children up to the age of five. We asked ourselves three questions. What is the content and format of these programs? What is their impact and how is it measured? What we found was quite striking. As our PRISMA diagram shows, only 10 studies of 5,507 met our eligibility criteria. So this research field is still emerging, particularly in long-term care settings. Although there was variability in approaches to intergenerational programming and study designs, there were common themes in the measures that were used to capture the usefulness of these programs. The three core themes were communication and social interaction, that's one, relationships, knowledge of others, social connectedness, that's two, and finally personal well-being. You might be wondering if there were any changes reported in any of these domains, and the answer is yes, there were some positive outcomes for everyone involved, particularly in the communication and relationships domains. For example, care home residents were more engaged and there was a sense of enjoyment, friendship and learning for all. However, there are also findings that captured more negative experiences. For example, children's boredom, negative attitudes to ageing and older people, and non-engagement or self-engagement in some people with dementia. So where does this leave us and what will be my next steps? First, I will work to finalise the synthesis of these findings together with the patient and public involvement group and submit this review for publication. I will then be exploring participants' views and perspectives on both positive and negative experiences in intergenerational communication, and um, I will apply age-sensitive and innovative methods for interviewing children, for example by using play interviews and picture book uh, sharing. I also intend to study intergenerational communication in care homes moment by moment, so that we could better understand the context in which enjoyment and positive engagement might occur and identify if there might be a potential interactional function to instances of non-engagement and boredom. A useful tool here will be conversation analysis. This is a video observation method which hasn't been applied to the study of communication in care homes before. From our quality appraisal of the studies that we found, we also learned that more detailed reporting of methodological decisions and challenges faced by the researchers will help develop the quality of our research further. Although the pandemic has introduced new challenges to the research world and all aspects of our lives, I know that children and care home residents cannot wait to uh, restart their sessions together when it's safe and possible to do so. So we shall look forward to this very joyful reunion. I would be delighted to hear from you with any comments or questions you might have. For me, a conversation about um, intergenerational research is a conversation about the world we might wish to build, a world where age and dementia integrated communities are possible, in which shared human values and moments of real connection are protected and cared for. Thank you very much for listening.